right? It, it is a lot of new faces yeah. that you, you are bringing in. What's your plan for trying to incorporate, trying to really get a mm -hmm. feel for, you know, a, a whole new roster almost here? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it'll be, it'll be a uh, day by day thing in terms of, you know, where we have, when we get these guys in market, um, you know, a couple, a couple of the guys are in town for a couple of days. You know, obviously Jake needs to get on with his honeymoon, uh, which is important. Um, but, you know, we, we have the one thing we have familiarity with these guys. Um, you know, Pablo, David, um, they've coached, you know, a number of these players. Um, and then we've spent some time with, with guys, you know, they were around a little bit during summer league. Um, you know, we just crossed paths with them a little bit. Uh, and then it'll be it'll be through the you know post Labor Day when we have kind of the the preseason unofficial workouts and uh, and into training camp. It'll be a competitive training camp, and with that we'll learn um, about the guys we have. Uh, you know, we have an idea of the way we want to play, and coaches are diving into things. A lot of these guys had smaller roles mm -hmm. in other places and potentially bigger roles here. How do you kind of try to project yeah. what you think a player is capable of, even if you've only seen it in smaller doses? Yeah, and and, and I don't even know if I'd, I'd put a um, you know, I'd put a cap on, you know, what small role, big role mm -hmm. on, on certain guys. You know, one, one thing I like about, you know, these individuals is, you know, you can go down the list. I mean, Jordan, his versatility defensively, that's something that we need. Um, Jake, you know, he, he's a guy who just fits in around Carl where he's an active cutter. Um, you know, he's, we look forward to him shooting the three um, consistently. Same with Tra Travion. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and, and obviously you got Shabazz who's, um, I said he's, a guy who can handle and pick and rolls. Um, he played in the, within a system uh, where the floor was open, where this, the court was uh, spaced. Uh, so we like the decision making he has out of that, and then him just being able to shoot the ball off, off ball screens. That gives us a little bit of a different dynamic. When you have so many young players who feel like they still have something to prove, to yeah. go to the next level. I mean, a roster full of them. Really. Yeah. What will that do to the energy of camp? Do you think? Yeah. I mean, I'd like to think it, it, it started. It has started in the summertime now, um, but you know, it being a competitive camp. Uh, you know, because I've, I've made it clear that, you know, minutes aren't going to be promised in June or July. That'll be, you know, that'll be ironed out in the training camp when we do get competitive. And uh, which, you know, these guys are, um, you know, w hungry to prove something. And, you know, we meant what we said where these guys have, have had, we've had a number of conversations with them about that. Do you see a nine-man rotation? Pretty much every game, with it being like a different seven, eight, nine, yeah. or do you see a fairly chronic ten and eleven? Yeah, rotation? it's 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 what I lean to is, uh, and that's something actually we're studying right now as a group um, is you know between nine and ten. Um, but you know, I think as people saw, I'm, I'm not opposed to trying something different right. too if something's not working. Um, I, I think pre that's what preseason's um, for in a lot of ways. Uh, but I mean, my hope would be that you know, 15 guys all play um, unbelievably through training camp, um, and then we have 15 guys that we could play out there to make our jobs tougher. Um, but things usually iron themselves out. The other thing, balance-wise, matching up with yeah. another team and uh, trying to establish your own identity and mm -hmm. style. How do you fall on that in terms of if your own yeah. identity and style yeah. gets your ass kicked I know, I know. in a couple of games, yeah. does that you stay yeah. with it just nah, to learn it? I, I, know, I know what you're saying. And, and I think you're probably you know, talking about the fact that if we play small at the four, you know, and, and it's a team that you know, has like a bigger four, yeah, yeah and, and, they're, and they're able to rebound the ball, you know, do we panic and do we just go away from, um, you know, a Covington at the four or one of those guys, for example, a layman at the four. Um, and, you know, my, my thought is no. Uh, I think this is big for us to establish our identity. Um, now that can change, you know, it's fluid, obviously, you know, you, you get competitive and, and you want to win, but I think it's, it's very important to establish our identity, um, you know, n and not just thinking about this year, but thinking about, you know, two, three, four, five years from now where, where we find how we want to play. Um, we have a good feel right now. Uh, we have a great vision on things and, uh, and then we can implement that moving forward. Does Jordan kind of give you that hybrid power forward where he like he can switch everything defensively and whatnot, but at the same time you're not small and he's yeah. a pretty good rebounder as well? Yeah, he, he does. And that was one of the things that early on um, he and I talked about. And, you know, because I asked him, uh, what you're, I've asked all these guys, what's your, what's your most comfortable pick and roll coverage? Because um, I think it's important that if these guys can uh, articulate, you know, how they feel, feel in terms of guarding ball screens, you know, obviously we're, we're not going to do everything that, that they might recommend, but, you know, if, if you hear what they're comfortable with, 
um, you can try to add facets of that to, to within your scheme. And, you know, he told me that, you know, switching, you know, one through five was his most comfortable pick and roll coverage. Um, so I, I think you can expect some of that. Do you expect just a complete diversity of those coverages Excuse for me. you guys this year? And, I mean, just last year so much, it was yeah. the past couple of years just dropping Cat back all yeah. the time. I mean, yeah. talking to Vantapool, like, yeah. is that going to be just opponent dependent or what, what are you seeing right now with that? How, how we envision things are is, is to have standards and have and where where it would be you know there's so many games come so fast in the nba where you know if you you might be in in a situation i mean i just I, i'll use the going from exactly <laughs> going from denver to to utah um you know because of the cyclone bomb in denver and you didn't really have time to go through a full walkthrough um you know so for that reason, against probably the biggest playbook in the NBA, for that reason, you want to have standards, how you're going to cover things. Uh, but there, there will be game plan adjustments and, and, you know, great player adjustments. We saw Jordan basically play center, uh, mm-hmm. State, especially this last year. Is there a lot more positional versatility maybe yeah. in this game? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think you could see him between the four and the five. Um, and then, you know, I think we have – a number of different looks at the five right now that we that we could throw out there, and you know that's a, I mean it when I say the the we over me mindset because you know like we kind of talked about it could be a different you know eight nine guys one one night um, we could we could see uh, you know just because you're in the rotation one one game um, doesn't mean that that's a given for the next you know two three games uh, it could be by by you know matchup wise but ultimately keeping our identity through things as well. Chris was just saying that he wants, he wants teams to adjust to you mm-hmm. as far as what you're putting on on the court. With Shabazz, is there like a maximum sort of threshold you feel like where you can play him as like a two alongside Jeff or another point guard? Like, because he had success yeah. in other places, but it wasn't necessarily a lot as a yeah, team. yeah. And and that you know with with that you know we we do want, um, like we said, we want to establish our identity, how we want to play, and you know having having Covington, a guy like that. You know, playing the four, um, he, you know, that could be a tough guard for, you know, like a Memphis or, or a, t- a team that might be playing bigger guys with things. Um, but it can go the same way along the perimeter. Uh, you got a guy like Shabazz, Shabazz um, you know, I don't know if there's a minutes cap that he could play at the two, but, you know, it's, it, it'll be a, hey, if he's in there with Teague, um, whoever the ball, whoever rebounds the ball, whoever, whoever gets the ball outlet to, to them, uh, we want to play in, in more of a read and react type open set. Um, which I think people saw some in, in summer league, uh, and, and so for that reason, positions can be interchangeable, especially along the perimeter between the one, two, and three. The center where you see maybe having the most competition because if you've got Carl there yeah. and then you've got Jordan playing some and Gorgie yeah. and Noah, that's a not yeah. That I, I, think, I think there will be a lot of competition there. Um, you know, it could be with the four as well. Uh, you know, where we we have an idea um, of of who is, is going to fill you know minutes. But you know, we want to see it. We mean it when we say we want to see it through the competition in training camp. We want somebody to win, win those minutes, earn those minutes with things. You know, Carl is going to get a majority of you know, minutes at the five. I mean, that's that's kind of a given. Um, but there's there is some some, I guess, holes uh, where guys guys can uh, find their way. Would it surprise you if Cat finished in the top two or three in assists for this team next year? Yeah, I mean, I, I look for I look for him to make a jump. In terms of, and that's something we spoke, you know, spoke a lot about, uh, trying to move him around and have him be at the top of the key, more where, um, you know, his usage isn't so high, uh, in terms of, you know, how he's getting his shots. You know, he still needs the ball in the post, early post ups, things like that, rim runs. Um, but you know, if he can get it off rolls, get it off cleared side rolls, um, you know, situations like that, uh, where he's able to make make plays, you know, in terms of hitting cutters. Um, and you, I thought he got better and better towards the end of last season. Um, I expect him to make a jump in, ter- in terms of his playmaking. What did you want the biggest focus to be for Andrew this offseason when he's working on different things? Like, what, what did you want him to maybe zero in on? I mean, you know, that's one of the reasons we have that, that um, diagram that we were all kind of looking at is the shot selection, shot values. I think that's really important, and it's not something that's, you know, just a, a suggestion in the NBA anymore. It's you know, hey, numbers don't lie. And so the analytics, um, they would tell, tell you what a good shot is. Um, you know, I say that where there's some situations where you don't want to take away a player's feel, but, you know, ultimately you're, you want to make sure that, and, you know, that's something we, we look forward to doing. We did in the summer league where we graded each player's shot, 
you know, each game. So they had, you know, okay, was this an A, B, C, D, you know, F, uh, basically, where you can grade it out. And so that's something that we're going to focus a lot about, a lot on within our offense. Ryan, you and Gerson have both kind of alluded to Covington at the four. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that kind of the operating assumption that he's going to be starting there? Uh, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's the assumption. I'd say it's a, there's a strong possibility. Um, but I, I'll, I will say that um, I have liked Andrew Wiggins playing the two at times, too. And, you know, I think that's, that's a good problem to have is when you have options. Um, especially if you got you know Andrew and, and, and Robert at the two and the three uh, at times, and then you, you you know you can plug Jake in, you can plug somebody else. You know you, you're switching all the same sizes with things. Now we have to become a better rebounding group uh, from the wing position. But you know Andrew poses matchup problems when you, when he gets a smaller guy on him at the, at the two and he's able to get downhill.